Many thanks for joining us. Today we have a special guest on the show, and this is the president of the Africa Development Bank, none other than Dr. Akiumi Adishina. Thank you, sir, for joining us it's on the show. It's good to be here with you. I yeah. hope I pronounced it right. You did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, it's not every day that we see you in Kenya and this side of East Africa. Perhaps just give us a sneak peek of what your visit entailed. We did see you during the Madaraka Day celebrations, of course. Oh, absolutely. I, I came uh, at the invitation of uh, my dear friend and brother, uh, His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta, to participate at the um, events for the Madaraka Day. Uh, which was fant fantastic and I was particularly happy that I could come this time because it is also his last Madaraka day as president sure. of the Federal Republic of Kenya. So I came basically for that and I must say I was totally blown away. I was so impressed with how much uh, this president has achieved as president of Kenya as he reeled out his accountability scorecard. I couldn't but say I, I kept clapping where I was and Later, when I saw him at his state house, I said, Mr. President, I was your clapper in chief. Uh, <laughs> because when you see a president who has been able to do 11,000 kilometers of paved road, a lot of those that are financed in cut by the African Development Bank. And as he said, he has 1,500 hospitals. And just, just looking at Nairobi, I used to live here. Um, you know, oh, yes. I, yeah, I lived uh -huh. here for about almost nine years. Mm -hmm. I don't even recognize Nairobi. Um, I look at the world-class infrastructure that you have in Nairobi that has beautified the city, that has made it easier, less congested, that has reduced the amount of greenhouse gas emissions and carbon emissions uh, that you have, and just made it just a pleasant place for people to travel in terms of travel time. So I'm here for that, and I also came to see some of the projects that we are doing at the African uh, Financing from the African Development Bank here. So that's why I'm here. All right. Talk to us about uh, some of the projects. Of course, uh, AFDB has been a strong... Uh, partner to Kenya, considering the historical past we've had, um, the bank uh, disbursing close to $6.4 billion. And uh, what do you see in the next medium term in terms of funding of projects within Kenya and East Africa? Well, you know, the, the, I always say as president of the African Development Bank, you know, the, the most important part of that for me is not the bank part. It's the development part, the, the bank that's actually accelerating development uh, for Africa. And right here in Kenya, um, you know, since 1967, when we started program operations here, we've actually uh, disbursed $6.4 billion, as you, as you said. But what's important, actually, is that when I was elected president, first elected in 2015, and in the period under this president, President Kenyatta, uh, we provided $4 billion just in that period, compared to what was done since 1967. So it's yeah. about 60, almost 68 percent of that was done. You know, 72 percent of that is in infrastructure, it's in energy, uh, it's in transport, it's in water, in sanitation. You know, I came here to see some of our work. You know, I went to the uh, road, uh, the Canal uh, Sagana uh, Marua Road, which has been a dream for the people in that area for four decades. Is financed by the African Development Bank with 178 million uh, euros. We also got uh, co-financing from the African, uh, 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 the the AGTF, which is African Growing Together Fund, which is actually from China, yeah. about 34 million euros, and it's fantastic. You know, I was told that that area sometimes it can take them 12 hours mm -hmm. to be on the road. It's beautiful, 84 kilometer dual carriageway. You look at what we finance Kenya for here with the outer. Ring Road here yes. in the city of, uh, of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. you know, it used to take about 45 minutes to move around. Now it takes about 15 minutes. You look at what we've done in terms of infrastructure. Uh, connecting, for example, um, uh, Kenya to, to uh, Tanzania, um, to uh, uh, Addis Ababa. So you're going from Ma Mombasa to Nairobi, to Mayole, all the way to, 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 to Ethiopia. We financed it with $1.1 billion. And that alone is increase the trade between Ethiopia and Kenya by whopping uh, 400 uh, percent. And I was so delighted to learn that the travel cost um, for people trying to move from Mombasa, I mean, to Nairobi to Mayole has actually used to be 2,500 Kenyan shillings, now it's 1,500 uh, Kenyan shillings. We're also financing Kenya on other things apart from transport infrastructure. We're doing energy infrastructure. For example, you take the Lake uh, Tukana, um, uh, uh, 310 megawatts 
It was financed by the African uh, Development Bank with 428 kilometers of transmission lines. And, and that provides uh, a lot of renewable energy for Kenya, clean energy for Kenya. We also financed the uh, Menangai uh, Geothermal Development Company, uh, which is generating about 104 megawatts, yeah. which is now giving you about almost 13 percent of your energy supply again from that. We, 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 we finance the interconnection between Kenya and Tanzania for electricity and the um, electricity highway, superhighway between Kenya and, and, and um, uh, Ethiopia, uh, which is linked to you with the East Africa energy pool and also South African energy pool. But most importantly, I must tell you is the smiles that I see in the face of people. One of the most exciting projects that I saw here is the last mile connectivity project mm -hmm. that connect poor households to the grid. So it's not just generating power, but you've got to be able to connect people to the grid. And uh, the poor households pay roughly $350 to get connected to the, to the grid. And through this um, last mile connectivity project, we brought them down by one f to $150. Yeah. And they can even pay the $150 over three years, right? And what that has done for Kenya, it's amazing. Uh, it has actually impacted about 2.4 million people that are connected to electricity. So all in all, just to say uh, that I am so thrilled with what we are uh, actually financing here, and I want to commend His Excellency the President and the government and the people of Kenya. And one last point on that road that I saw yeah. uh, with the canal uh, Sagana and, uh, and uh, the Marua with uh, CS uh, Cabinet Secretary Machabe. You know, we, 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 we approved that project in September of 2019. It was supposed to be delivered uh, by December of 2024. 24, yeah. And now it's a first class road. It was delivered ahead of time, two years ahead of time. So I really believe that Kenya is to be highly commended for the quality of the investments and what the value for money we are getting from our investments here. All right. And uh, Mr. President, quite exciting times indeed. Uh, looking at uh, the infrastructure bug that seems to have caught up with many African governments. But on the flip side, we do also know that um, infrastructure has a big role to play in terms of connectivity. And at the same time, infrastructure for the common man down there in the rural village, their biggest worry is they can never eat infrastructure. GDP numbers for Africa are projected to be growing. Kenya's uh, economic forecasts are st st standing at about 7.1 percent. But the bigger conversation is how does this trickle down to the average farmer, say down there in Kisumu or down there in Muranga? Because at the end of the day, they need to fill it. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, I hear people say a lot that we don't eat infrastructure. But actually, you do eat infrastructure. When you have a good road, like the one I just mentioned to you from uh, the one we from Kenal to Sagana to Marua, those are areas of high agricultural potential. All of a sudden, when I went there, I was told that the farmers cannot evacuate their produce. The transport cost has gone down. Yeah. It means that the cost <coughs> of the inputs, seeds and fertilizers that go to those villages goes down because the transport cost has actually gone down. It means that you can actually have uh, transporters that actually come to buy your produce instead of middlemen that just because you don't have infrastructure, they, they, they will uh, basically offer you nothing, right, uh, because, of, because of that. And also look at what infrastructure does in terms of schooling. You know, rural areas that have infrastructure, it means that teachers can actually have interest in moving to those rural areas, you know, because you have water, you have sanitation, you have also electricity. And you have roads that people can travel on, right? And people don't often realize that, you know, if you look at how much of your um, disposable income you'd spend on transport, if you don't have infrastructure, your disposable income effectively is going to be declining because you're spending most of your money on those kind of travel costs when, in fact, you can be saving. Yeah. So infrastructure also allows you to save because it gives you a lot more disposable, uh, disposable income. And look at what happens here with uh, infrastructure for um, M-Pesa. You know, Kenya is known because of its M-Pesa money transfer system. Sure. Do you know how that happened? Mm -hmm. That's infrastructure. That's digital infrastructure. Yeah. You know, that actually made that happen. So when people talk about infrastructure, um, of course, physically you don't eat the infrastructure. But in fact, 
you eat it in terms of what the economy actually what it does for you in the economy i'll give you an example you know um we're financing uh, 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 an irrigation project uh, that's called Twake, uh, multi-purpose dam. Um, this is in the Machakos area, Kitui area, you know, Makwene, all these dry land areas. Mm -hmm. That infrastructure will allow you to do so many things. First, you have about 688 million cubic meters of water. Just imagine, so water storage, water supply, and then for storage, I mean, water storage, but also for uh, sanitation right and then it will allow you to have 20 megawatts of electricity that all those rural areas will have access to electricity right if you don't know what infrastructure is try not to have one it's like <laughs> trying to be a human being without a backbone you try it and see how 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 you work yeah and then of course you have this multi-purpose dam will provide um uh, water to being able to irrigate about 100,000 acres of land for farmers and that is really what infrastructure does for people. I'll give you another example. You know, look at life. When the president was talking about the importance of hospitals, mm -hmm. and that is, you know, healthcare infrastructure. Now, you need primary healthcare infrastructure, secondary healthcare infrastructure, and tertiary healthcare infrastructure. If you do not have healthcare infrastructure, if somebody's sick, what happens? They can really go down or they can die. So infrastructure is vital. No economy can ever develop without investing significantly in infrastructure. And I want to encourage the government of Kenya to continue to invest in quality, climate resilient infrastructure. The more infrastructure you have, the greater connectivity you have with your neighbors, the more you can trade, the more, you know, take for example, the case of energy. The electricity superhighway that we have between Kenya and Ethiopia makes it possible for you to actually import cheaper electricity from uh, 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 from uh, 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 from Ethiopia. Ethiopia, and then when you have excess to sell, you sell to somebody else and you make money. So infrastructure is fundamental uh, to growth, and I think that you're doing well as you continue to do more.